So you just bought a new game. Well, maybe not new new, but new to you. You play it, you like it, and it ends. What now? Is it time to forget it quicker than you beat it? Time to mindlessly consume a new disposable product? In some cases, you don't really get a choice. However, sometimes game developers go above and beyond to add replayability. Now, we've talked about like replayability a lot in the past. Bonus content, online multiplayer, and creator modes are all cool things that we've definitely explored here. But today I want to talk about something new. I want to talk about the priceless value of a post game. Make me a sandwich. Odds are, when you beat that game, you didn't use every weapon. Or maybe you ignored one side of the skill tree to max out another. Perhaps you chose a narrative route that locked off certain mechanics or experiences. The most basic post game I can think of is a simple New Game Plus that lets you have free range with everything the game has to offer right from the start. Batman Arkham City is a really good example of this. Being able to access secret areas, beat enemies faster, and crush sections that gave you a hard time the first time you ran through. All of this warrants at least a second run. Split screen multiplayer can make your game immortal. No servers, no problem. Only a certain set of missions? Play them again with friends. Playing them again with friends opens a door of endless possibilities. Fly through the encounter with precise teamwork or dick around and fight each other in random areas. The Halo series is a great example of the split-screen metagame, where the gameplay transforms into an all-new beast as the play session becomes a social affair. It's less about finishing the fight and more about, dude, holy shit, monkey people. Nice work. Or, boost me out of the map so we can do this easter egg. Of course, the PvE and PvP designated modes that offer uber-customizable matches never gets old as there's always something new or a new mind game in the same old mode when you're playing against a different person. I may have beat Halo Combat Evolved on all difficulties, but the game is never really over, even over 20 years later. That's it. That's it. Oh my god! Far Cry's 3 and 4 are super replayable because the campaigns are not the main attraction. The chaotic world events and conquerable outposts are. When you beat an early 2010s Far Cry and liberate every outpost, you have the option to reset the world and repopulate the outpost, reintroducing plentiful enemies and different events into the surrounding regions. This gives you the chance to try out early game outposts with late game weapons, uh, attack harder outposts with maxed out skill trees, or just enjoy the randomly generated chaos characteristic of Far Cry. I'm going to touch you. Resident Evil 4 is one of the few games to neither be single purpose or level up, yet it still retains good balancing. For those who don't know, a single purpose game sandbox is where each gun has a unique given role and your mastery of the game happens when you develop an understanding of each role each weapon has. A level up system is where you get better at the game by unlocking better versions of previously owned weapons. Usually when games deviate from these two formulas, the sandboxes begin to feel a little aimless. Resident Evil 4 however does not feel aimless. It still fits right there in the middle of the spectrum with what I'd like to call a mix and match sandbox. Each weapon category features guns that fit better or worse when paired together with other sandbox elements. For example, the Silver Ghost is most effective for players that utilize the knife and melee systems. It's also really well complemented by a magnum that you keep in your back pocket for when you come across a boss fight. The Punisher offers accurate shots with crowd control abilities with its penetration, but it's incredibly weak. Therefore, pairing it with a widespread shotgun like the Striker and a stunning weapon like the TMP is a good idea. That way, when penetration isn't enough, you can rely on stopping power. 
there are plenty of combos that vary how you'll approach different combat scenarios. And understanding which weapons combine better with another given weapon is how you master the game. Therein lies the post-game. Buying, selling, and maxing out different guns each playthrough warrants multiple runs. My favorite post-game, besides the endless split-screen fun of Halo, is in Ghost of Tsushima. New cosmetics exclusive to New Game Plus, a new difficulty exclusive to New Game Plus, a new merchant and currency exclusive to New Game Plus that warrant replaying not just the main story, but also every little piece of side content, because everything you do grants you this new currency, which goes to new stuff you didn't have access to on your first playthrough. A New Game Plus exclusive horse, and crazy New Game Plus charms that allow you to do cool things that you couldn't do your first playthrough, like summon lightning out of the sky to fry your enemies. Ghost is the game that keeps on giving. If it had split screen, it might even give Halo a run for its money. So why does all this matter? Well, I stopped exploring Zeta Halo because I realized that the same encounters with the same enemy types waited for me in the same places. And after two years, it got old. A lot of challenge in Metal Gear Solid V is gone once you get your completely overpowered items and weapons that is better than anything the enemy can throw at you. While I love Breath of the Wild, it sucks that I can't explore a post-Calamity Ganon Hyrule. Games like Metal Gear Solid V offer fun online multiplayer modes, but we've already talked about how fragile that kind of longevity already is. An offline post-game offers the excitement of something new and a reason to revisit the old. It's no coincidence that a lot of the games I still constantly play, decades after they release, have good post games. This has been Pliskin, over and out. This is Solid Snake. Hey, subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him. <laughs>